Right. Um, okay, settle down. Let's let's start. <clears throat> okay, can we start? <clears throat> Q. <clears throat> right. Uh, so we were talking about network model the other day, right? So we discussed uh, OSI model, right? And then uh, the OSI model has seven layers, right? And each layer will have a specific task. Right? This example given the other day was that sending a, a letter. Right? right? From sender to receiver, there are multiple layers involved. Different people, different organizations, different techniques. Right? So the same way, when, when the one machine sends data to another machine via, via the network cable, it also goes through the same process. Right? So there are seven layers which X as a, uh, as, a, as a model for, for data transmission. And as you said earlier, this, each layer has a different function and it provides services, separate services. And each layer, as the data goes down from the user, it will add a particular header to it and then go on all the way until the bits are transmitted via signals on the cable and then on the other way on the receiver side we receive the packet of data and then we will remove the the headers one by one to check its correctness whether it's valid or not if data is not valid it's, it's, it's dropped or is passed back to the layer below for its action right? only if the header is correct then the data is passed on to the higher layer right so we have, covered four, we have covered four layers the other day, the physical layer, right, basically transmit signals, converts data into signals. The second layer, makes sure the data received correctly on the other side. Right? So there's error checking and also try to add a correction if possible. And the main thing about here is that it does hop to hop delivery. It makes sure data travels from one place from one hop to another hop, from one machine to the next machine. Right? That's why its job is to make sure data arrives safely to the next place it's supposed to go. Not the destination, but the next link. Right? And it also uses physical addresses, the so-called MAC address. Right? So this is the example given. Layer 2 is just responsible for sending from A to B. It makes sure layer 2 is responsible as long as data received by A, B is correct, then it is satisfied, right? And then B can send data to someone else later, B to E, and then you will pass on to layer one again, say, okay, layer one, you convert this bit into, into six signals and then send the other side, and so on. So layer two only responsible for hop to hop or link to link. It does not know the destination. You just need to know, I need to send this data to, next, to the next machine, that's all. Right? It does not know where is the final destination of the data. Layer 3 is the one which is responsible for source to destination, end to end. As we did a, uh, a simple experiment the other day to show you that how uh, hop, source to end, source to destination delivery is, is made. Right? So here it uses IP addresses to identify the destination address. And of course, there's routing. Right, so here, end to end basically means that the layer three on machine A will insert the IP address and make sure that the data received by, by the destination. Right, so again, layer two responsible only for between the links. Layer three responsible from all the way from source until destination. Right, this is done by checking the IP address. IP address is only in layer three. Right, so only layer three can, can know whether data has reached destination or not. Right, layer two will not know. And then layer four, as we, did, we saw the other day, is responsible for making sure that data is, large data is delivered correctly in the correct sequence. So large data will be broken up into blocks or segments, put, put into a sequence, put a sequence number, and make sure data arrives on the other side to layer four on a destination also in the proper sequence, right? All the packets are received in the correct order. So here we use port addresses to identify different 
services or different applications running on a particular server. Right, so flow, flow control and error control from end to end. Right, so this is the example given. So layer three responsible from machine to machine. Layer four responsible from one application on a machine to another application on different machine. Right, because you can have multiple applications running on one machine. So layer four is responsible for that. How does it do that? By port addresses. Right, so each, each application, each service running on a server will have a separate port address. Right? Okay, so that's why we covered the other day. So next layer up is the session control or session layer. Right? So session basically layer is that it decides how the two applications will communicate with one another. Right? Are they going to communicate both at the same time or is it one, one after another or only one way? Right? Whether it's half duplex or whether it is full duplex. Right? Just like say here, right? we have one process wants to send, want to communicate with this. How does, this, how does it communicate? Is it only one way that this process only can send data to the other side and nothing else? Or it can also receive data from the other side? Can it happen at the same time? Or, can it, or does it only happen at one at a time? Right? So that's a, the decision has to be made by the session layer. Right? So session, session layer will decide all these things beforehand. Another thing session layer does is synchronization in terms of checkpoints. Right. Checkpoints are basically markers put into the data stream. When you send a large block of data, you put markers inside so that once the marker is received by the other side, it knows that certain amount of data has been received. So anything goes wrong, you don't have to start from the beginning. You start from the marker. All right. Just like we're doing also, we are doing chapter by chapter. If I ask you something, do you understand? You say no, I'll go back to the chapter. I'm not going to start from day one. Right. I assume each time I put a marker there. Right. So that's that's what synchronization is all about. All right, so how does it do that? You will get the data from the upper layer. The block of data, it will put synchronization checkpoints into the data at regular intervals. Right? And this data later will be, will be passed on to the transport layer. Transport layer will, will do what? It will, sorry. Transport layer will actually block, chop up the data into small blocks. Right? And then put sequence number here in the header. So this is the sequence number coming from the user. Right? If you go to layer 3, it will put IP number. If you go to layer 2, it will put the error, error control code. And then go to layer 1, it will convert the bits into signals. Right? So session layer is responsible for dialog control and synchronization. So on the receiver side, again, again each layer will put its own header there. And then when the data is received from the transport layer on the receiver side, again, we'll check the header. If the header is okay, then it will make sure that all the synchronization points has been achieved. Then only it will pass the data to the upper layer. So once everything is confirmed, synchronization is correct, then only it will, it will be verified. Right? Layer number six, higher one, basically does three things, right? Translation, encryption and compression. Translation, what it does is that it converts from, the one, data, from one data format to another data format. Right? You can have one, basically when you have different machines running different services, right? for example, you go back to this example again, here, yeah? we have one process here, one machine, another process, another machine. Right? These two machines might be different architecture. This could be Windows, this could be I iMac. Or, or a Linux or a Unix machine, right? They could be running same web server, running this is running web client, this is running web server, right? But they could be on a different platform. So therefore, their data format, their internal data formats might be different, right? So that's the job of the presentation layer to make sure that the data received from one from one machine to the other machine is in the correct format, right? So it does any translation services if it's required. So normal, the normal translation services provided is basically for data exchanges in terms of character strings. Right? When you type a letter, characters, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, and all that, each one is converted into a binary code. 
right? There are three systems which converts your character into a binary code: the ASCII format, FCD code format, or the Unicode format, right? This is seven bits. This is eight bits. This is sixteen bits, right? So if I'm using ASCII, you are using Unicode. I send seven bits. You don't understand seven seven bits because you understand sixteen bits. You send me sixteen bits. I don't know don't know what to do. It's too much for me. Right, so you do not speak the same language, so therefore the presentation layer has to resolve this. Right. Second thing is about numbers. Numbers, I think you have learned in your computer organization, you have different types: unsigned, signed, two's complement, and so on. Right. Okay, you might have should have heard of it. If you've forgotten, never mind. Should have heard of it. Right. So there are different types of number systems you used. How to represent positive numbers, negative numbers? How to represent uh, large numbers, how to represent uh, fractions and scientific numbers and so on, right? So they're different formats. So again, which format do you use? Right? So again, it has to be known or it has to be translated accordingly. Right? So what the translation service pre uh, pre presentation layer does is that you will convert the senders. So the senders presentation layer will convert the data from the sender dependent format, whatever format it is, into some common format. And the receiver will convert from the common format into whatever the server requires. Right? So normally is that, for example, in, 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 in internet, most of, most of the characters are normally in ASCII, right? most of the time. But the new standard is everything is Unicode. Right? So that's different. So let's say ASCII. So everything, if your, your machine is running, Unicode, then you must convert to ASCII before transmit on the network line. If you are already, already running ASCII, then no problem. All right? Same thing for the number side also. So it needs to find what is the, a, a common one. So this is translation. Presentation layer also if, tries to encrypt your data. Right? If you enable your encryption, say your network encryption on, right? you, you use a secure shell and all these things. SSH, SSH, then or you use a secure server, HTTPS, then it will automatically uh, encrypt your data packets before sending out. So who does that? Presentation layer, right? And it also tries to do compression if you again enable it or it might do it automatically to save space, right? So these are three jobs done by presentation layer. So as usual, the presentation layer will receive data from the upper level, upper layer, and then it will put a header and then pass it on to the lower layer. So what the header contains? It probably contains these three things. What translation format it has used, what encryption algorithm it has used, RSA or whatever it is, right? And what, what, com oh, sorry, uh, what compression technique is it, it has used? So this has to be embedded it has to be made known inside the header, right? So if you use standard techniques and the technique is, is mentioned here, then when you receive on the receiver side, you will know what to do. You will know how to, de how to decompress, how to de-encrypt, right? And also how to translate the data inside that. So finally, application layer is the highest layer. Right? Application layer is the one which provides the functions or the uh, the, the facilities for the user. So user interacts with application layer only. Right? So user sits on top here, looks at the interface. Interface is the application layer. And then clicks on button, do something and all these things. Those are application, application layer functions. Right? So you can have, say, a network virtual terminal. You want to do a remote login, it's from your Application layer. Remote login is application layer function. Right? And then you, you will go down, convert one by one from each layer, do, go downwards to convert your instruction. Right? File transfer, mail services, directory services, of course, all these things. Other applications also all comes under. They will have an application layer there. Right? Right, so again, same thing. You get the user, user or human here. They will interact with the user interface. Whatever they click, right? you say you open, a, open up a web browser. 
you type in your URL and say go, right? The moment you press go, your application layer will take the URL and then pass it on, puts a header and pass it on to the presentation layer. Right? It's all already on its way, you know. Okay, so it will put its header and all these things, whatever it is. All right, so this is a summary of layers, right? From the bottom up, the bottom one is the most technical part, the most technical details, and as it goes higher and higher, it becomes more abstract, more general kind of services. Right, so the lower level works more, right? just like an organization. The general manager or, or the chairman of the company normally doesn't do much work, only talk, but gets the highest pay. Right? The lowest workers are the ones actually doing the work, but they get the, 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 the least pay. Right? So most of the work is being done here, right? but this one is claiming all the credit. Okay? Right, that's OSI model. Right? OSI is basically a very traditional model. Then we have another pro model, which we, is the more common one, more commonly used and more widely used, the TCP IP model. Right? Again, it's the same principles, same principles, similar principles, only different strategies, that's all. Right? So here, their model, this TCP IP and OSR does not match exactly, but there's a good mapping between them, right? because their, their functions are basically the same. So in TCP IP model, there are basically four layers only. Instead of seven, we have four. Right? So you go from bottom, network access, internet, transport, and application. Right? And again, it's hierarchy protocol. Hierarchy again, this way. Each layer contains independent protocols, right? The protocols are, are developed independently. That means next time a new protocol comes up, it can be embedded here and it does not affect anything else. Right? That's why, for example, you have wireless now, right? Wireless will only affect this part. Maybe a little bit of this, only this part. That's the same. Whether you use a TCP packet, you use a wireless, or you use a, a, a Existing Ethernet, it doesn't make a difference, right? It's still a TCP packet. It's layer four. It is out of that. It's normally transport layer here, right? So this is the comparison between OSI and TCP/IP. So OSI has seven layers here. TCP has TCP/IP has four layers, right? One, two, three, four. So the lower layer, network access, or we call host network, is equivalent to OSI's bottom two layers. Physical and data link are combined to produce called network access or host network layer. The third layer in OSI is the same as third layer here, second layer here. Transport is still the same, transport. And then the top three layers are combined into one application. Right, so TCP makes things a bit slightly easier in terms of writing applications. So if you write TCP IP, TCP IP application, your, your, your user level will handle all these three things. Right, instead of worrying each one part of it separately. Right? And there are, these are the standards defined for each layer. Right? So the name TCP IP comes from here. This is the TCP and this is the IP. But the IP, IP protocol is run in layer, in, layer, uh, in layer 3 in OSI and TCP runs in layer 4 of OSI. Right? So this is the model used by all, almost all internet applications. Right, web browser, email, almost all, all of them uses this particular uh, model. So TCP IP has four levels of addresses. Right? Earlier, remember OSI has three levels, the MAC address, the IP address, and the port address. Right? TCP IP has four, it added one extra, right? the specific address. So these are the four layers other the addresses, so physical, physical address is basically the bottom one, logical address is here, port address is basically transport layer, and then the specific address is related to the application specific, depending on the application. Right, we'll see that later. Ah, so physical address is the, is, the, is the fundamental address for each particular connection. Right, so this is defined by the LAN or the WAN, depending on which which type of network do you use? So different networks will have their own separate physical address. Right? So for example, like Ethernet uses 48-bit 
address. It's normally, if you open up an Ethernet card, you will see it's normally printed on the card itself. It's fixed. Right? The card manufacturers has been given license to, 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 to create a 48-bit unique MAC address. Right? It'll make sure that it does not interfere, does not duplicate with anybody else. Right? So it looks something like this because this is in a hexadecimal format, 48-bit. So it's also called link address. It's the lower, lowest level address available, right? or we call it the, the MAC address. Um, just to show you where it is, I can quickly show you. Um, let me show you here. You might have seen it, but uh, just to make sure that you know where it is. You go up under your connection, network connection, and then here you will see that. You see this physical address? That's your MAC address, the Ethernet address. Right? 48 bits in hexadecimal format. So different mach all machines sh should have different one. Right? It depends on your network card. You change your network card, you put a new network card, your, your, your physical address will change, although your IP number remains the same. Right? Okay, IP number is like this. Okay. So that's, that's your physical address, right? So physical address is only used by the lower layer. That means it's only used between hop to hop only. From one machine to the next, ma next machine only. It's not source to destination, no. Nope. Right? From link to link only. Right, for example, here, this is the four machines we have, and these are the, are the MAC addresses of the four machines. So we say we want to send data pass on from different layers above and say pass to the layer two and say, okay, send this data. Right, so the lowest layer will put the say destination address 87, source is 10. Right? I'm going to send this data to 87. Right? So in this case, this is a bus. The data is received by all uh, machines. Each machine will check whether the MAC address belongs to it or not. If it belongs to it, it will pick it up, not means it will just leave it alone. Right? And then it reaches the destination. Right? But it's basically hop to hop. Right? The logical address uniquely identifies the host regardless of the physical physical network. So logical address, the IP address is basically higher level. Right? At, at, at a different layer altogether. So you must be in a layer three of OSI to be able to recognize the IP address. Right? So this is used to reach a host on different network. Earlier, this is only used to reach uh, it's only used to reach machine on the same network. Right? So I didn't mention here. This so physical address is only can only be used to to go from one machine to another machine in the same network. In the same LAN, sorry, in the same LAN. Cannot go out. Right? A logical address or IP address allows you to go to a host or a destination which is on a different LAN altogether. Right? Just like you say, if you have your IC, that's your physical address. Right? You can only go within Malaysia only. You cannot go out. You go outside, nobody recognizes your IC. Right? You go outside, you require something else, your passport. Your passport is your like, IP address. It gives you a unique identity recognized by everyone. Right? But when you come locally, you don't use passport. Right? You know, because it's locally, it's within the network. You only use your IC. Right? It's the same principle here. So IP address is basically 32 bits, right? as you know. So the physical addresses change from hop to hop. Logical address normally remain the same right, for a particular packet. Right, so the example is given here. So now we have two addresses. Right, so this machine has two addresses. One is A is the IP address, 10 is the physical address. 
right? So we are sending, when we send data from say A to P, machine P, which is here on a different network. This is different LAN altogether, LAN 1, LAN 2, LAN 3, right? So layer 3 or network layer will say, okay, you will put, it, you will put the header, destination address, uh, sorry, uh, source address A, destination P, put it into the header, pass it on to layer below, right? Layer, layer below will not touch this part, you see, the whole, back, the whole rectangular becomes is embedded inside there, encapsulated. So now the lower layer will decide. First, need to do first. You need to do is to pass this data to everyone in the this land first, because this machine, this layer two machine here, does not know where does not know where the destination is, because destination address is in the layer above. It does not. It does not recognize. It does not read it. So you say, okay, I need to pass this data. I do not know whether the destination is in this network or elsewhere. I'll pass to everyone. Right? That's what you will do. So that, so you will say, okay, the nearest one, next, next link is machine number 44. I don't know, machine number 20, right? The next link is 20. So coming from 20, 10, destination 20, source 10. It's, it's the other way around. Right? And then it sends it out. It comes here, this will pick it up, okay, 20 physical address, it belongs to me, yes. Fix it up, extract the data out and say, now you go to layer 3 and check. As IP address, same as A, no, it's not. So that means this, this packet does not belong to this machine. So you will say, okay, I will forward it, this is a router, so you will forward it to the other side and say, okay, since this packet reaches me, that means it does not reach anybody else, it's not on this, this data is not in this, this destination is dot not on this land, therefore it will pass it to the next land. Right? So you pass on to the next link. Right? So and then it creates again the same same packet is encapsulated again. But now, but now the source becomes the destination becomes the next hop, and the source destination source address is the is the current physical address. Right? So it gives the next hop address and pass it on. Reaches here, it checks whether it belongs to it, it doesn't belong to it, again pass it on to the next hop and then sends again to the last hop and then when it reaches here, it will extract other data. This time when it, when, it, when it gets the IP address, it reaches the IP address, it will recognize that this A is the same, uh, this, sorry, this P is the same as the IP address of the machine, therefore it will pass it on to the layer above. All right? So there are multiple, layer, multiple levels of encapsulation, decapsulation of data going on, right? So this is what the routers will do. Every packet you will receive, it will inspect its IP address, right? Look at IP address and see where this IP address belongs to this, this, this uh, LAN or some other LAN. Right? We will take, we, there's routing algorithms which does that. Right? So from there, we will decide whether to leave it here or to pass it on next time. But for other machines like switch and all that, you just switch it on, just pass it on. It does not know the difference. So then, next one is the port address. As I mentioned earlier, port address identifies the process or application on a host. And this is normally used by transport layer to identify different applications running on a particular host. So one host can have multiple applications running at the same time. Each one must be running on a different port. That's a requirement, right? If they run on the same port, it will be conflict. It will not work. So there are multiple port addresses available for a host, each one representing a separate process, right? So in TCP/IP, port address is 16 bits, right? So these are the common port, common ports available, or rather ports which are already fixed in numbers. That means they are fixed. Uh, in terms of their usage, so we don't change them, right? So port 80 is always reserved for web or HTTP traffic packets only. Right? If your email packets, they go normally under say SMDP or some other some other email related port, right? So again, the same thing how it works. So now instead earlier we've seen the data link layer. The physical layer addresses are put here, then network layers addresses, IP addresses are also put on the outside. Then transport layer will also put the 
port address, source port, and destination port. Right, so application layer, uh, the, the source port layer will say it's coming from port number A, and then it's supposed to go to port number J. That's the job of the transport layer. Only when it comes to the network layer, you will put the IP address of this machine as source and IP address of this machine as destination. Right, so different layers will put the different IP addre different addresses accordingly. Finally, there, there can also can be specific application related addresses. All right. So now what we have is that we have we have one machine which is one IP address. It can have multiple processes running or multiple applications running, each one on different port. Right? But each application can have multiple users connected to it. Right? For example, if this A is an e email address, right? it's an email application, an email application, web, web application, database application, right? ABC. So I want to send data to my email, email server. Email server is here, A. Right? You send the data to your email, I also send it to the email, all go to the same email address. Same server. Same email application, but different user. Right? So then, it's within the application to differentiate between one user and another user. So how do we differentiate? We give a different email address. Yeah, your, your, user your user login ID, for example, must be different. Right? So it can be email address or even URL. URL, again, is related to your web traffic, HTTPS. Web address, web application running, Right, same web application, but each person wants to access different parts of the web application, different URLs on the same application. Right, so this is considered as a user of uh, application specific address. So it's very, very specific to application being used. And this specific address is normally converted to a corresponding port or, or IP address by the machine. Right? So it doesn't matter to as long as user is concerned, it doesn't matter. Okay? Right, so that's a short one today. Okay. Any questions? Anything? As you shall know, but if not missed. We'll see you on next Wednesday then. Right. So remember your test, huh? Your test is the following following uh, week on thirtieth.